Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing and the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. Lord, we ask that you point us in the direction of all truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to go into the book of Deuteronomy. We, of course, have uh, 66 books in the Bible. And this, uh, uh, this lesson today, uh, I'm just going to explain why. Uh, we want to go through the book of Deuteronomy. Now, with the 66 books of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament is important for us to study because uh, when we study the Scripture, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <clears throat> There are divisions in the Bible. We, of course, have the basic divisions, Old Testament, New Testament. That's a basic uh, division. And why would we study the Old Testament when we have the New, some people are going to say? Well, first of all, there's uh, false teachings out there saying, oh, the God of the Old Testament was the God of wrath, and the God of the New Testament, he, he's just this loving, forgiving God. God has not changed. Okay, there's no uh, shadow of turning in him. He, he changes not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he will judge sin. He would judge sin in the Old Testament. He was willing to uh, be merciful in the Old Testament. And the same is true. If we read the book of Revelation, we see that God is going to judge sin. And he is coming back. Uh, his eyes are as a flame of fire that Jesus Christ will judge sin. He'll either be the judge or the savior to those that will come humbly to him. So uh, a lot of false doctrines out there because people do not uh, rightly divide, don't understand those uh, truths. Well, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now, uh, perfect means that man of God has come to a maturity. So uh, we can come to a maturity by studying the word of God. And that's what we want to do. Because when we study scripture, it is profitable to us for doctrine. That's Old Testament. That's New Testament. For reproof, for correction, so that we change. We do things in the right way for instruction in righteousness. Well, in uh, the reason we're looking at Deuteronomy is we're going to look at Matthew 4, again, verses 1 to 11. And we're going to talk about that. Okay, so picking in, up in Matthew 4, and then I'll explain why we're going to Deuteronomy. Verse 4, Then when Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So when Jesus, he's as hungry and as physically deprived as uh, you could possibly be, then Satan comes to tempt him. Okay, This is his temptation in the wilderness. So a temptation, it's a test. We understand that. Well, what where did Jesus go to? He went to the Word of God. He went to the Scripture when he was tempted. He's showing us that we need to go to the Scripture. We need to know the Scripture. But what Scripture did he go to? Well, he went to Deuteronomy 8.3. Deuteronomy 8.3 says, And he humbled thee. This is God speaking uh, to the nation of Israel, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee uh, know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So, we he was offered physical food by the devil, but Jesus referred that we need to look for the spiritual food that comes only from God. Yes, God sent the manna from heaven, and uh, Jesus is called the bread of heaven. 
and he's called the living word. And the word is always about Jesus. And we're looking back, we're looking at Deuteronomy and saying uh, that Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy. There's an importance to looking back to the Old Testament uh, for answers just as much as the new. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, all they had was the Old Testament. And we talked about that passage in Luke uh, 24, that then he expounded to them all the scriptures. I think it's Luke 24, 27. I might be off on the verse, but he expounded them on all the scriptures, all the things uh, in Moses and the prophets that testified of him. You know, so Moses referring to the first five books of the Bible and all the prophets, it was all about the coming Messiah, all about Jesus, all about God and who he is. So Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy. Uh, now picking up again in Matthew 4, Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, where is that written? If we go to Deuteronomy 6, 16, now I'm also going to read verse 15 first. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye, as ye tempted him in Massa. So we're not to, supposed to put the Lord to a test. Okay, well, Satan was definitely, he was breaking that uh, himself by putting the Lord, uh, the God of the universe, to the test when he was doing these things to Jesus. But if only in our society we would come back to the scripture, come back to the Bible. We've lost uh, biblical principles in society, and it's not going to end well for those that will not will not come back to the Lord uh, because uh, the anger of the Lord is only going to, uh, he's only going to wait so long. He is uh, very patient. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But there comes a point where he will say, you know, come up here to his uh, believers and he'll put the world through that test of the great tribulation doesn't mean we can't face uh, persecution prior to that time. But Matthew uh, 4 verse 8, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Uh, now we could also go to Exodus here, but Deuteronomy 6.13 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall, and shall swear by his name. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now see, we're going to go into Deuteronomy because... Jesus himself, he quoted from Deuteronomy three times when he was the one tempted. Now, I'm not saying that any that Deuteronomy becomes a book that's more important than the others. All 66 books of the Bible are important. Um, as we study scripture, uh, I don't want to be super technical here, but uh, we go back to Genesis and uh, in uh correct study of scripture. It's called the law of first mention that we go back to Genesis and look at uh, all our doctrines. For instance, the doctrine of salvation is first mentioned in Genesis 3.15, and I will uh, put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. That uh, it speaks of Jesus who would come and crush the serpent's head and give him a mortal wound, but Jesus would go to the cross and in that sense have a heel wound that he would die, but it wouldn't be uh, a permanent uh, death that he would rise again. It's already hinted of in Genesis. And we have uh, the doctrine of sin is found in Genesis. Uh, we have uh, all sorts of 
are biblical doctrines. In fact, all of them have their roots in Genesis, and that's called the law of first mention. When we study scripture, if we're studying in the New Testament and we find a passage that's referenced in the Old Testament, as we do here with these ones in Deuteronomy, that Jesus, he mentioned them when he was walking the face of the earth. He, he of course, wrote them all. When we have these passages, we should go back to the passages in the Old Testament because what's in the Old Testament can't be changed. Jesus didn't change these things when he gave us the New Testament. He just unfolded more of uh, reality to us of of what is happening for us uh, now, but we should use the Old Testament to explain the new because the things in the Old Testament uh, can't be changed. And that's called a complementary hermeneutic, that when we look uh, to that New Testament passage, we go back to the Old Testament passage and say, what was the context there? And we don't change the meaning and we don't define the Old Testament with the new. We define the new with what was given in the Old Testament uh, to begin with. But Deuteronomy, uh, just to read a little in Deuteronomy 17, When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are about me, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose one from among thy brethren. Shalt thou set king over thee, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should multiply horses, for as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. And he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of the law and these statutes to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in the kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So it speaks in this passage of the, of the king that would rule over the land. Well, Saul was made king. He didn't follow these, and, and he didn't uh, follow uh, what was uh, meant. He had the kingdom and then the promise stripped away from him. King David then was next, but King David sinned with Bathsheba. You know, he still, he didn't follow the commands of the Lord. Solomon came next. He multiplied horses. He multiplied wives to himself. He, he didn't fulfill those things, and the kingdom was taken uh, from him, and it was split, and it was never the same. They had 40 wonderful years with King Solomon. However, uh, the Lord you know, took the kingdom, but this passage ultimately refers to the king, Jesus Christ, who is of the line of David, who would come that would sit on the throne forever. And he came, he offered the kingdom to Israel. They rejected him. He went to the cross. He offers salvation and eternal life to all that would be, will believe in him. But he's still going to fulfill the promises back from Genesis that were given to Abraham. He promised Abraham he would be a great people. He's preserved the people, the nation of Israel. He promised he would be a great nation. He promised him a land. Yes, they got that land when Joshua entered the land, but they never took out all the uh, people out of the land and fully possessed it. Neither did they in the time of Saul or David or King Solomon. They didn't even possess it all then. That was just a picture, a type and a shadow of things to come when Jesus would give them the land fully. When he comes back the second time, he'll give them all that land uh, in that fullest way and promised a seed promise to Abraham that his seed would bless all the nations. And if we're a believer in Jesus Christ, as believers in Christ, we have promise in that seed promise of Abraham, because Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, God is able to raise up from these stones, children of Abraham. And that's what he did from us because on Christ, the solid rock, when we come to faith in Christ, 
we're part of the seed promise of Abraham. We won't inherit the land. We won't inherit the, uh, being a great nation. We haven't replaced Israel. God is still working with his nation of Israel. And he's going to fulfill all those promises to them one day when he comes back and sets his foot down on the Mount of Olives as the true king mentioned in Deuteronomy 17 because he's going to fulfill all these promises. So that's just a reason why, uh, uh, quite a few reasons why I want to go through Deuteronomy. It's important to go through every, the book, every book of the Bible, but a little bit different introduction into the book of Deuteronomy, and we will start Deuteronomy 1 tomorrow. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.